Greetings, this is Joelle and I am the Vibrarian. I am here to elevate, enlighten, and empower. And I'm doing that from the inside and out. I appreciate that you join me for these shares on my YouTube channel. And today on In The Cards, I'm very excited to be reviewing and sharing two new decks that I received by the same artist. Her name is Sharonda or Sharanda, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Sharanda and Kumar, Kumara. And these are the two decks that I have received, the Magdalayan Oracle, and the Twin Flame Wisdom Oracle. Now, I happened to run across these two books on Instagram, which is how I came to discover that there were actually decks that went with them. Uh, they are not actually available on Amazon for purchase. Now, I'm a person, I love to support independent creators and artists who are out there bringing these beautiful things to life for those of us to use. And in the space of Oracle cards, there are so many artists who take paintings that they've actually developed and then bring them into card format so they can become an Oracle. And I was just delighted to discover these decks. Um, just sharing with you real quickly her website so that you can uh, check her out. Um, it is Sharonda, Sharanda Silks. All right. And so you can look through what she has in her store and what she talks about, the motivation between behind her art and her silk paintings. And then, of course, there's information on how to order her paintings and her oracle cards. Now, the oracle cards I had to order through a third party site um, through a, it was Make Playing Cards. And um, I, again, I had to order them. So they took a couple weeks to come in. I, I do use Make Playing Cards because there are a lot of indie crafters there in that space. And I seem to have good results from those decks. Um, the card quality varies based on what the artist uh, or creator decides to use. You really don't have like a control over that. Um, but these turned out to be really good. So. Uh, you can see here's a little bit about her website and then if you're looking for the guidebooks on amazon they're very affordable this is the magdalayan second edition the first edition is out of print so you'll want to go ahead and get this i didn't want to lose an opportunity to get the guidebook uh, because these have so much beautiful information that is channeled through from the spiritual kind of conversation that the artist has so here we have both of these guidebooks. As you can see, they're very affordable. We're looking at about uh, five or six dollars each. Nice, uh, several pages long. Both of them are. I don't think they were available in any other format. Okay, so back to the cards here. So I love the books. I did a few readings just using the books before receiving the cards because I was impatient. And when you want to do that, you can just flip to a page and open it and see what the message is. As I said, you can see that these books are actually quite thick and the guidance that is in each of them is extensive. She has poems and uh, information from other people that she um, used to learn and she cites everything to the original source where she reads uh, the tidbit of wisdom or the lore or story that she shares in with the cards. And uh, yes, you can see both of the books have quite dense material with them. Um, so I'm not going to do like a lot of card pulls today, but I definitely am going to do a pick a card here in a little bit. Now, um, starting with the Magdalene Oracle, the reason that I chose this is because the the uh, Magdalene and the Lion Order, the Rose Order, the Rose Sisters, these are all words to me that indicate that it is a spiritual connection to the Divine Feminine through uh, like the lineage, the, the Rose lineage, um, which is like the High Priestesses, 
um, the keepers of the secret knowledge, the keepers of the flame. You can kind of do your own dive in about that and uh, possibly do some teachings on it at some point in the future. But uh, nevertheless, things such as the red hair and the lotus and the Magdalene, I love how she says the Magdalene because that really merges like the masculine and feminine energies um, from the divine uh, creator love line, if you will, uh, those who are here to embody love on this planet and have been for many, 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 many thousands of years. So in the Magdalene Oracle, you can see here, the card deck is actually uh, oriented like horizontally. And we have like this woman here kind of dreaming uh, it feels like a moon. We have the beautiful pinks and reds of love and compassion. Um, and as you can see, there's a rose on it. Beautiful cards. And the stock on the cards is actually a little bit thinner than some of the cards that I can that I've used, but it is not so thin that it's like paper. Um, it is well coated, as you can see from the shine. It's very slippery, and the deck slides around and about. These do not come with a box, or if they did, I did not see where to order the box at the time. But a lot of times, what I will end up doing is having a a little cloth baggie. Here's an example. I'll find a nice little bag just to put the cards in because a lot of times you take them out anyway and the boxes get frayed. So anyway, these are larger than playing card side decks. Um, I'll draw from this in a little bit. Um, each of her cards in this particular book, all the cards, this that all the cards are the same. The other deck has a few different cards and I'll speak about those in a second. So uh, we'll do a reading from this. And again, there's beautiful poems and poetry and things of that nature in the book. Now the second deck, the Twin Flame Wisdom Oracle. Gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. And actually this art appears on one of the cards in the other deck. And they're very closely related, of course, because they came through the same artist. And so uh, you can definitely see the, the interweaving of the messages and the information as it comes through. Um, now in this deck, there are two kinds of cards. They have similar card stock, so they're very companionable together. I'll probably at some point wind up merging everything together just to do readings when I'm working with clients. But um, so here you can see there is a card that is a clarifier card. Now the clarifier cards end up helping to show more information about the card that you draw from the regular set of the deck. And there are four clarifier cards and uh, we may have one that pops up in the reading today. Um, and in her index of materials here, there is a section then at the end that talks about how to read the clarifying cards uh, along with each of the other cards in the deck. So depending on the clarifier that you draw, it will help you to kind of go deeper with the message. She's got things like movies, music and songs to go in with for one of the clarifiers, um, area of focus in your life, like to where to focus for healing in relationship to the message that comes through. So uh, we'll definitely want to see if something comes up for that today. When I did my first reading with the deck yesterday, I actually did receive a clarifier card and it had to do with music. And what was so interesting is right after I finished that reading, an uh, app on my phone popped up and said I needed to, like there was music for me to listen to. Sometimes you just have to sing out loud, it says. And when I started listening, it was a song I'd never heard before. And it was like Supernatural Thing by Benny King. Uh, that's the gentleman who sang Stand By Me, which we're all familiar with. But it was about your love is a supernatural thing. So it was very kind of interesting to have that come up uh, in my reading for certain. So as always, I like to use charms so we can do a quick pick a card reading. Today, I'm only going to pick two charms out. These are the charms that I um, ordered and received from Chris at All Things Intuitive. You can also check her out at allthingsintuitive.com. And so we're going to just pull a dive in here and see if we can pick 
down to two charms. Okay, we've got a guitar and an acorn. I'm sure I cannot necessarily get those up where you can see them. They're so tiny. So again, we we're talking about music and here is a guitar and a little acorn from a tiny acorn does the mighty oak tree grow. All right, so focus in on those charms and what the messages will be for you. We will see here. Let me get everything switched over. We're going to start first with the Magdalene, Magdalayan Oracle. And we'll look at the guitar and the acorns. So if you focus in, now I've already blessed the cards. I advise you to clear and charge and connect with your deck when you first receive them. And there are lots of affirmations and things you can find on Pinterest and, and other places, but really go with your own guidance in terms of how you uh, plan to use the card and the energy that you want to connect with. And I always am in an energy of unconditionally loving and truthful messages that will be for the highest good of all. So uh, just with that note, let's go ahead and shuffle and see we've got two cards here to pull. First for the guitar and then for the acorn. Let's see what seed, what tiny seed wants to be planted right now and also then what music. <laughs> Definitely want to pay attention to music uh, going in the next couple days as you're in the grocery store in your car seeing what songs from the heavenly realms want to come into your awareness. All right, so first we're going to look to the guitar. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, Mother Mary, <laughs> Mother Mary and the angels of mercy, hear your prayers. Look at this image. Beautiful. So what I see here is that we have roses in the center of the chest. We have like a feminine figure over here. Uh, we have the blue veil, which often signifies Mother Mary. And then we have here the illuminated, like Madonna, Halo, as well as just many, many images of the Divine Mother. And even here I see like the, the flowing red hair of like the, uh, the, the mermaid lineage or the Celtic lineage. Uh, that is always an indicator to me as well of the divine feminine. Let's see if we can get this in all her faces and forms. The Mother Mary is compassionate and here we can see she has almost clutched in her arms a child. Uh, again, this artwork is just very beautiful and I can imagine on a silk it would just be something beautiful. So Mother Mary and the angels of mercy hear your prayers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, we're going to look to see fifteen stars also on here and six roses. You know, I believe that numbers are significant. Oh, here we have another haloed woman on this side. So we have lots of uh, angels of mercy here and uh, Mother Mary is sometimes known as the Queen of Angels as well. And here we have a little baby over in the corner nestled and then we have this purple color of like illumination of the crown chakra receiving spiritual messages. So let us see what messages Mother Mary and the Angels of Mercy have for us today. <clears throat> 
That is on page 84. 84 comes down to uh, 12, which is 13. I mean, 12, which is a three, which is about mind, body, spirit in connection. So let us see here. I'm trying to see if we can, I can hold this up for you. <laughs> We're still working out all the logistics here. It says, uh, Mother Mary and the angels of mercy hear your prayers. Feel the healing energies of the Mother Mary and the angels of mercy. She is also joined by the loving presence of Huan Yin, Isis, and Mary Magdalene. They all represent deep compassion and motherly devotion to God and humanity. They clearly hear the prayers of all who call to them with a humble and open heart. The Mary Masters of Compassion as I call them, have hugs to share with all. All Mary Masters, united in oneness and purpose, have a powerful love that is unconditional and inspires self-empowerment and spiritual growth. The name Mary is synonymous with the mother. The powerful mother energy of the Mary Masters of Compassion holds a strong flow of rose ray energy. The high frequencies of pure rose essential oil represents the Mary Masters, <coughs> excuse me, and can be used in your sacred ceremonies for calling in the Mary Masters of compassion. Stay committed to a life of forgiveness and compassion. Hold the energy of compassion in your heart and express this outwardly in your interactions with your brothers and sisters of our Mary. Gaia, of our mother Gaia, excuse me, I'm going to have to put this down, um, while maintaining and sustaining the high frequency energy, peace on earth can be realized. Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, you will know you have had a visitation from Mother Mary when you sense the smell of fragrant roses. Blue roses indicate her connection to Venus. She represents the divine mother principle on earth and she has accepted the responsibility of holding the immaculate concept, which is the divine blueprint for the ascension into the light for every single person on earth. She embodies divine mercy through the trials and tests that she so courageously faced in her earthly lives. She also lived a long life of service in the divine, in the ancient civilization, Lemuria. Mary Magdalene, our consciousness today has expanded to include a completely new concept of Mary Magdalene. Moreover, she has been reborn in the hearts of many to her true divine and loving nature. Her blackened name is being restored to reflect her true loving soul. As an icon of the divine feminine, Mary Magdalene has a special grace and beauty in her humanness and passionate devotion to God and humanity. Jesus and Mary Magdalene as twin flames are forever one. Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin embodies gentle, loving care grace and feminine softness, but a softness with strength and character. With Asian flair, she guides you with her sweet sisterly presence, alive with compassion, exuding a grounded peace. She rides her gentle dragon. Isis, heavenly cosmic mother Isis incarnated and lived the goddess way in ancient Egypt. Her divine consort, was the god Osiris. By nurturing and embodying the goddess and divine feminine energy, we can anchor the ascension energies here on Mother Gaia. Divine mercy through the Mary Mother Goddesses is changing the world. Your prayers are being answers as answered as your own actions are facilitating these prayers to manifest. And then it has a picture here of Mother Mary's blue rose. Okay. Wow. So that is beautiful. As I was talking about the rose order, the rose lineage before, this is that energy that is here on the planet and all of their forms and every pathway. 
There is no barrier to compassion and unconditional love. And this is perfect for the divine feminine that dwells in all of us, regardless of our gender expression. The divine feminine is the love and the mothering and the nurturing and the creation principle embodied. Beautiful. So here we have this. Uh, and one of the songs that I'll put in the links that I love is by The Sacred Souls, and it's called May I Call You Rose, because you're sweet like a flower to me. So that is the song that I received, and that's one that I've shared uh, in my space with my twin flame, and it's on our playlist. And so I'm hearing that now, and so I will definitely share that with the collective. Uh, we are all part of the rose. Okay, so now going on to those of you that pick the acorn, let us see what guidance from the Magdalene Oracle there is about the acorn that grows into the mighty oak. Loving this energy in the cars before uh, um, already. I was, you know, these stars to me reminded me of the Pleiades. That's why I was counting to see how many they were. And of course, that's the seven sisters is the Pleiades. There are certainly more than seven in this image, but I still can't help but associate that, which also then is relating to the Lemurian energy. Uh, of, of love and creativity that's being expressed in resurgence at this time. All right, let me give it one more shuffle for the acorn. Oh, wow, ground the mother. Look at that, the rainbow. Beautiful, look at those energies. We are here to ground this energy into the planet as above, so below. Ground to the mother and anchor in the rainbow rays of the cosmos. So bringing in, and here we see this lotus at the sacral chakra and grounding. Uh, go outside, sit on the earth, connect to Mother Gaia, our planet. We are here and the love and energy that we are putting out and emitting as a frequency is the rainbow ray. So we are uh, connecting through all cultures and all countries and all spiritual walks that are based in the pathway of love. So we are grounding that down here and this is absolutely beautiful. What else do we see here? She's got a third eye. Looks like her third eye is open. And of course, uh, connecting through the sacral space and the redness of the root chakra down into the earth is where we are bringing into manifestation these energies. Beautiful. I love this. Ooh, I love Oracle cards and I love the creative ways that spirit can speak to us. So let's see what we have here. Ground to Mother Earth is card number 55. Now today is actually a 555 day. It is the fifth month and the 23rd day of 2021. So this is a 555. I should not have been surprised to see this numerological confirmation come through at this time today as well. All right, for the change that we are bringing onto the planet. Let's see what we have here. Ground to the Mother Earth and anchor in the rainbow rays of the cosmos. Honor the healing process of the root chakra and all three lower chakras. Connect to the Mother Earth and let her assist you through these times that are calling for more grounding. Ascension symptoms have been coming up for people and vertigo is one of the symptoms that is helped greatly by staying grounded. Walk barefoot out in nature and limit your exposure to electronic devices. Issues with the first, second, and third chakras are related to feelings of despair and grief. 
Sometimes grief, loneliness, and despair lead to desires of escapism. Negative patterns establish themselves through long length of time. Times of despair and abuse have engendered degradation of the quality of life by poverty, war, and disease. These we must dismantle now by empowered action. Past lives that involved abuse led us to check out emotionally in order to endure and cope with incidences of physical, spiritual, and mental abuse. Being checked out emotionally is a very ungrounded way to live. However, some people have found that when the pain body is triggered, ungroundedness falls into place like a defense mechanism. All right, let's see. Healing the first chakra involves feeling the withheld pain and transmuting it with unconditional love and acceptance. Once we are grounded to Mother Earth, we can start to replace the pain body with the ecstatic body. It is natural for us to be connected with the bliss of the cosmos. I call upon you, dear ones, with urgency in my heart for a collective womb cleansing and reconnection with your deepest ability to feel. We must be able to feel with our hearts and be present with every living fiber of our being in an unfiltered, uncensored, and unrestrained way. For thousands of years, many wars have been fought in the name of control, suppression, and male superiority. These wars represent our collective battle between the mind and heart and between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. You had many lifetimes where you allowed yourself to be ruled, controlled, and abused to the point that you could no longer handle feeling it. This is the main reason why grounding is still a major problem for people. Throughout history, it was necessary for you to leave your body due to trauma. It was a coping mechanism of the mind. You had to close down your ability to feel through your heart for your survival. And as a result, you became disconnected from your ecstatic body, your physical body and planetary body. Call upon Gaia to help you release old karmic attachments that are rooted in unhealthy emotions and old energy. Root yourself into mother earth and feel her holding you firmly uproot what is unhealthy and not serving you but do not uproot your destiny with feelings of wanting to leave the planet rest in your knowingness that once you let go of what is not serving you the pain shall pass and you will feel liberation and peace while in meditation bathe yourself in the rainbow rays of the cosmos you are being hugged by thousands of angels Heal your issues around being grounded. Love your ecstatic body connection. So we are the acorn planting ourselves into Mother Gaia, who is the fertile soil in which we will grow to be the mighty oak trees. I love that it's talking about grounded as we have the ultimate expression, acorns fall from the tree to the ground and when they're buried in it, then uh, that is when the growth happens. So we, we have to come down into this plane. We came here for a reason, uh, all of us star seeds and light workers, and uh, we have to feel it to heal it. And it's beautiful to know that we have this surrounding compassion angels around us to help us as we let go and feel and heal and move down into our connection because we are the change that we have been waiting for. Wow, these are so beautiful. All right, let's keep going here. So in the Twin Flame Wisdom Oracle, let us see what we have here from uh, the guitar, those of us who picked that as well. From the acorn, but first we'll go ahead with this guitar. If one of the uh, clarifier come, part comes up, then I will draw a second one because it is meant to expand on the knowledge of a primary card. 
not necessarily to stand alone. Okay, it's peeking out at once. Let's see here. One more shuffle. All right, we did not get one for this. So let's see what we have here. Healing the womb space. Wow, we just saw in that other card that it was talking about the womb. We all have a womb, masculine and feminine. It is not just a feminine thing, right? So this is our area of the sacral, the creation space where we birth things into light. And many of us have experienced trauma in the womb, be it from uh, having imbalances in our uh, energy that cause us to have fibroids, or pain and uh, severe pain at the time of our menstruation. Uh, men can also experience trauma wounding in this area. We've got a lot of sexual trauma and abuse that is rampant on the planet and misdirected use of sacral sexual energy that is not creating things that are loving. Um, you can see here, it's got like almost all of these like almost like vasculars, like blood vessels, like what we would see surrounding it and nourishing uh, the womb space. Uh, many people have also then experienced the infertility or the inability to carry a child to term, uh, losing many children through miscarriage. And also in past times when reproductive choices were not necessarily available to us, uh, women would just be uh, birthing children unto exhaustion. Um, and the healer women, the healer craft were able to kind of begin to regulate the body with herbs um, at a point in time in our history to where we could control things more. I mean, personally, right now, I am like drinking tons of herbal tea, which helps me to deal with the symptoms that I have. But I learned to make peace with my body and not feel aggravation about it. And I'm very, very specific about um, energies that I um, even encounter at all that would be in womb space. Like I'm very, very aware of the power of this chakra and I don't treat it lightly. And many people um, carry the energies of their past lovers and their past relationships that did not work out well, um, uh, past projects that you had like in the material world that did not go out well, past disappointments. All of that can be carried in that, in that womb space. And even for like a masculine who has not been able to express his creative and feminine uh, side, um, that suppression there also ties up within the womb space. So I'm very interested to see what this guidance is going to have. We've got such beautiful pink and it really does almost even look like a tree to me in the center circle there. And we have both the masculine and feminine, but it's like they're uh, kind of, there's a, a something between them and I don't know, let's see what I'm getting. I don't know if it is a positive division or a negative division. I guess that depends on your experience, whether you have animosity towards the feminine, then you would have it as a barrier rather than a balance and vice versa. All right, so let us see what we have here in healing the womb space. This is on page 56, card number 19 and 56 is an 11 which is a one one and that again is the energy of conscious creation and balance and 11 11 one one those are twin names so you know we would have the masculine and the feminine we have the creator and the creation all of those so let's see here this is rather long but uh healing your goddess within you of all karmic knots and imbalances from timelines and dimensions can be accomplished through your clear intention. Discover what your imbalances are through your relationship with your second chakra. With courage and conviction, clear up old patterns of abandonment, 
and betrayal that may be deeply laden within your second chakra. Let me back up because there is a beginning paragraph that I missed here. This healing piece of artwork represents the completion of my healing process with my sacral chakra or womb chakra. The path to healing my womb chakra involved giving cervical cancer and healing from it. On an energetic level, I felt that my creativity was suppressed and locked away from me in layers of bitterness and betrayal. The clearing of my energy field through this medical drama brought with it a complete rebirthing of my spirit and a passionate drive to live my life to the fullest. My womb space has reached a place of deep peace and love. Wow. That's very interesting. I'm glad I caught that. You know, I think it's very interesting because I, what's coming to me now is like, as uh, you know, uh, within the African American community here in the United States, there is a strong incidence of fibroids and uh, tum tumorous growths within the womb. And what we have, I believe, being expressed is through uh, you know, the slavery experience in this country was particularly toxic and terrible. And in it, that cycle of 400 years, we have generation after generation of generation where you, your, the fruit of your loins, the seeds of your birth were considered to be assets of property. And so the complex trauma of knowing that your child or anything that you birthed was going to be birthed into a life of not freedom and then not having the ability to control that and being forced to uh, procreate for financial gain of others there is an energetic wound of that that i believe is expressed through our now moment and um, again, this is for all people who have experienced trauma of birth and reproductivity. But I think it's particularly telling here in, our, in the United States that we have this uh, kind of epidemic of fibroids and, uh, in the Black community. So let me continue on with the guidance here. So it says that uh, uh, again, healing your goddess within you of all karmic knots and imbalances from all timelines and dimensions can be accomplished through your clear intention. Discover what your imbalances are through your relationship with your second chakra. With courage and conviction, clear up old patterns of abandonment and betrayal that may be deeply laden within your second chakra. Once you clear this chakra, Nourish it with care by expressing your creative self and sensual self. Honor your womb and be empowered through deep nurturing self-love. While your sacral center is calling to you in need, observe your thoughts. They are the telltale signs of your transient weaknesses waiting to be transformed into strength. As you allow each of these thoughts to be recognized as fruitful, you will understand the temptation to remain in the ways of old. What are you being urged to do? Look within your sacred creations to actualize your dreams of truth. In this center lies the dormant potential of personal power. As you acknowledge this creative calling, you will realize the power is within you to choose your fate. Destiny is not at the mercy of the wind. You have a choice as to how you focus your energy. Now is the time to unfold your beautiful flower of divine femininity. Reject this power no longer and realize the potential that awaits you in this very sacred center of rebirth. As you clear the way for new creations and sacred divine union, so do you clear the outworn patterns taking up residence in your womb. Think no longer of the past. Release old toxic thoughts through forgiveness and compassion and embrace the concept of life lived as choice. You hold the flower, the rose, which has been placed in your womb for conscious creation and only you can coerce it to bloom. 
Fear not, for this power is what will bring you grace and open the passageway for unending love of thyself. This love is the radiant beauty of the divine feminine waiting to be activated in your special role in this lifetime. This opportunity is one that will afford you many options if you choose them. Be motherly and nurture your creations with love. See not what is causing disharmony, harmony. choose only that which brings you joy. Joy is your connection to creativity and true power. Use this dormant power to unblock your destiny. Joy heals faster than any modality. Go deep in peace and choose your heart's calling. Healing the womb space or sacral chakra also involves clearing all of the karma associated with the times in your life when your womb was dishonored and not held as sacred. This could have been through your own doing, for example, through casual sexual encounters that did not involve true love or respect. Forgive yourself fully because in those moments you were probably not operating from an awakened state of consciousness or self-love. Once you fully love yourself, you will not engage in disrespectful sexual encounters. If you have suffered from sexual violation, violation of any kind, whether as a child or as an adult, this process can be very difficult and perhaps you should seek out professional help from healers that deal specifically with that kind of soul fragmentation. All right. Wow. That is deep. All right, so we are here to change that energy and to heal it. We're surrounded by the angels of compassion. We are connecting. Again, we have that sacral chakra in this card and focus. So I can see how these messages are really unifying together. So here we have the first card from this. And now for the card for the acorn let us see what this last message is for those of you who pick that or that are still tuned in for this download beautiful all right second draw and third shuffle All right, we did not get a clarifier for this one either. All right, let us see. Signs and angel numbers. Oh, wow, okay. Wow, look at this. We have an airplane flying in. We have this feminine with angel wings. We have the orange of the sacral chakra and the sun. And it almost looks like a, a face uh, or up here. <laughs> like this is like the head area. And it's interesting because I just was speaking with someone earlier today. Uh, she received the synchronicity 1010 twice in the last 24 hours. And so I was explaining to her, you know, what you need to do is go find your preferred dictionary online for angel numbers. There are many of them out there and your guides will align to wherever you go to look for angel number confirmation when they begin speaking to you in that. Uh, yesterday I had uh, 222 at two on on 522. It was like uh, I posted on my Instagram. You can definitely uh, check out a follow over there. I do a lot of posting of those kind of things, which to me again was a divine feminine energy coming through at that moment. So signs and angel numbers. You can find feathers, pennies. There's all kinds of things that will confirm for you that you are actually connected to your higher self and those energies and will bring in messages for you. I love that plane kind of coming in for a landing there. I live next to the airport in Atlanta, so the planes are a constant. <laughs> so uh, constantly carrying messages and carrying mail and packages and carrying things to people. So we're constantly receiving this. All right, so let us see what signs and angel numbers guide us for us to have shared with us. That is on page 88. <laughs> I love it. 
Eight is the infinite energy, the return as above, so below. I believe I have an infinity on my, yeah, um, the bracelet that I chose to wear today has an eight on it. And of course, as a piano player, 88 keys is always something that speaks to me about uh, playing piano and the music. So we're tying into signs and synchronicities from songs as well. All right, eight is also infinite abundance. So let's look here on page, <clears throat> excuse me, 88. All right, signs and synchronicities are seeing numbers like 144 all the time are clear indications from your spiritual guides that you are on the right track and that you are progressing on your twin flame journey. Now, this is not in the book, but 144 is one of the numbers that indicates uh, the twin flame uh, energy. It's uh, the 12 stranded DNA activation and the monad structure. There's a lot of teaching about the 144 out there. And so um, you can dive into that out on YouTube and do some Google searching. And again, I'll probably come back and do a, a quick uh, teaching or download about that at some point because I know it's uh, something that I get a lot of questions about in terms of the 144. Uh, it's definitely an activation number. So um, it says that um, angel numbers, as they are called by some, are actually giving you activations along the way. They are reprogramming your subconscious mind because they are ascension activation codes. Angel numbers vary. Usually it is 1111 or 144 or combinations of double fours and ones, but this varies from person to person. Twin flame signs can come in many forms. You may see the name of your twin flame on everything. You may hear his or her name in a song that you just turn on the radio, just as you turn on the radio. Things like that are signs. Telepathy is a very strong sign that you are connected to your twin flame on a very deep level. I have had very few conversations with my twin flame in person, but recently when I did, I felt that he could read my mind. Another sign is mirroring. One example from, of this from my own experience is when I put my Khalil Gibran book on my dresser. The very next day, my twin placed a post about Khalil Gibran on his social media page. This is a subtle example, but the signs you experience will usually be subtle. They are still very potent and valid. The universe uses signs, angel numbers, and synchronicities to help us bypass our logical mind. If we didn't have these subtle clues along the path, we are likely to give up because it can be very challenging to try to anchor in a new paradigm into the third dimensional reality through a twin flame relationship. The, con the concept of synchronicity is based on the idea that the individual through the unconscious has access to an absolute knowledge, which is not bound by the limitations of space or time. Carl Jung's primary source of material for this hypothesis was to be found in his study of dreams. I'm not sure if it's Jung or Jung, but you know it's J-U-N-G apostrophe S. This is the song. The song Synchronicity by the Police reminds me of the twin flame journey. It says, with one breath, with one flow, we will know synchronicity, a sleep trance, a dream dance, a shared romance, synchronicity, a connecting principle linked to the invisible, almost imperceptible, something inexpressible, science insusceptible, logic so inflexible, casually connectable, nothing is invincible. If we share this nightmare, then we can dream spiritus mundi. If you act as you think, the missing link, synchronicity. A connecting principle linked to the invisible, almost imperceptible, something inexpressible, science insusceptible, logic so inflexible, casually connectable. Nothing is invincible. We know you, they know me. Extrasensory synchronicity. A star fall, a phone call, it joins all synchronicity. 
a connecting principle linked to the invisible, almost imperceptible, something inexpressible, science insusceptible, logic so inflexible, causally connectable, nothing is invincible. It's so wide, it's, it's so deep, it's so wide, you're inside synchronicity, effect without a cause, subatomic laws, scientific pause, synchronicity. All right. Wow. All right, synchronicity. So there's lots of synchronicity and signs connecting in this reading today. I hope that you have enjoyed this moment with me in the cards. As you can see, this deck is deep and I look forward to my own readings with it. And of course, if you are interested in having a personal reading, uh, my contact information will be below this video. Please do check out uh, the website and the lady who created this deck. It is beautiful and support her uh, work. And yeah, I love it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next round of In the Cards. I've got some more decks that I can't wait to share with you. And I'm grateful for this beautiful gift of creativity that she is expressing as an artist and used as a tool for us to tap in to receive the messages for our highest good from the divine. I wish for you all of the blessings you can possibly have and know that the light in me absolutely honors the light in you. Namaste.